see them without any interruption. Mexican Americans play mariachi music to express enthusiasm. At this meeting of the United Farm Workers of America, it expresses the affection they feel for a man who has done so much for farm workers, Cesar Chavez. As a boy working to support his family during the Depression, Chavez observed firsthand the plight of migrant farm workers. They worked long hours for low pay, had no medical care, no accident or unemployment insurance, no sanitary facilities in the fields, and worst of all, no mechanism for expressing their grievances or improving their lot. In 1962, Chavez formed a farm workers union and persuaded the farm workers to strike for better conditions. Chavez inspired leadership kept the union alive through 10 years of bitter struggle against the farm owners and the Teamsters Union. Finally, in 1975, California gave farm workers the right to vote for the union of their choice. The United Farm Workers won 70% of these elections. Throughout the struggle, Chavez taught his members the nonviolent principles of Martin Luther King and Mahatma Gandhi. Nonviolence is more powerful than violence, Chavez said. When victory comes through violence, there are many strings attached. Chavez is a self-taught man widely read in philosophy, labor history, economics, and agriculture. The microwave comes into, if it comes into two areas, it's about $10,000 each. Uh, he runs the farm workers' union from an office at La Paz, the union's headquarters in Keene, California. Here, 170 volunteers live in trailers and work to advance the union's cause. All of them, including Chavez, receive housing, clothing and food, plus a salary of $10 a week. The compound has a well-equipped print shop. It produces all the printed material required by the union. Leaflets, bumper stickers, educational pamphlets, letterheads, and posters. Rather than run the union by decree, Chavez travels to meetings all over the state. Here he gathers ideas from the membership for the expansion of the union's medical plan. The farm workers named their plan the Robert F. Kennedy Plan, out of respect for the man who was a supporter of Chavez and the union from the start. The plan provides comprehensive medical protection for the union farm workers and their families. Careful records are kept so that the insurance coverage follows each worker as he moves with the harvest from farm to farm. Since its inception in 1970, seven million dollars of benefits have been paid to the members and their families. The change in Joaquin Mujia's life is a direct result of Chavez's determination to have farm workers take control of their own destiny. Formerly a farmhand, Joaquin has learned how to program and operate the union's computer. The computer is invaluable for keeping records of the dues, pensions, and liability payments of the members, many of whom work at several different ranches a month. If Chavez is to realize his dream of organizing all the farm workers in California and then the three million farm workers across the U.S., he will need skilled negotiators. Here, workers who have had no prior experience are given an intensive nine-month course in labor history, contract mediation, and collective bargaining. I see the 
To reduce their food bills, the volunteers devote one day a week to growing vegetables in the compound's three-acre garden. Chavez, long disturbed by the growers' excessive use of pesticides, which harm the farm workers as much as the consumer, has turned the farm into a model of advanced growing techniques that require no pesticides. The crops are planted close to each other and irrigated by pumps that send water through a network of fine tubes to the soil, drop by drop. This technique uses a fraction of the water consumed by conventional methods. And the vegetables that result are filled with healthful nutrients and free of pesticides. Chavez was born on a farm near Yuma, Arizona in 1927. His mother and father, who were still living, instilled in him the traditional Mexican reverence for the family. In 1948, he married Helen Sabella, and they had eight children and 11 grandchildren. La Paz is not only an administrative center and a school, it is also a close-knit community bound together by common ideals, friendship, and the moral leadership of Chavez. When two staff members marry, Cesar, his wife Helen, and the entire community turn out to express support for the young couple. And what God has joined, no man Sunday often finds Chavez visiting union chapters all over the state. Here in Ventura County, workers of a large egg ranch celebrate an election victory that will permit them to become members of the United Farm Workers Union. After all the years of struggle and strife, Chavez is beginning to enjoy the fruits of his labor. He is happy to see pride and confidence come to a people who now believe they can improve their future. Chavez, however, is wise enough to realize that building and managing a modern nationwide union will perhaps be more difficult than fighting on picket lines or going to jail. But the vow he made to eradicate the injustices he witnessed as a youth will undoubtedly inspire his leadership and ensure that the farm workers of the future who give their lives to the land will share in its bounty. In pursuit of his dream, Chavez has gone from a poor farm boy to an internationally acclaimed figure, but nothing means more to him than the well-being of his people. If your thoughts were in the future,